Welcome, I'm Brian Hayes. In this video, I'm gonna talk about workflow rules, process builder, and flow. The first thing to understand is that Salesforce has been around for a while and its tools have evolved over time. So originally, when they first released a tool for automation, it was workflow rules. It has some pretty good functionality, but it has since been replaced. After workflow rules, they released process builder. Process builder was better, a little bit easier user interface, in my opinion, a little bit more capability. And then most recently, they've released Salesforce Flow. Salesforce Flow is very powerful. I think the learning curve is a bit steeper, but once you understand it, you can do a lot more in that tool than you could in the other two. So moving forward, if you're gonna learn anything, I would recommend that you learn Flow and you migrate what you already have from Process Builder and Workflow into Flow. That being said, it's still helpful to know where workflow rules are and where the Process Builder processes are in order for you to investigate to see if there's any pre-existing automations. Because if you're inheriting an older org or you've installed packages that have been around for a while, you probably have a few things in Process Builder or workflow rules that you need to keep an eye on, especially if something starts happening in your Salesforce org uh, that you can't quite figure out. If you don't know where that automation is coming from, it could be from one of those two places. So to get to that menu, go into Setup, and on the left-hand side, scroll down to Process Automation. Under Process Automation, you'll see we've got Flows here, we've got Process Builder, and then Workflow Rules at the bottom. Let's take a look at Process Builder first. When you click into Process Builder, you can then see a list of all of your processes. First thing to make note of is on the right-hand side under Status. Is this process active or inactive? Next thing to take a look at is if it's being triggered by an object. Essentially, process builder processes are record triggered flows. They're very similar in that way. Let's take a look at one of these processes. You can click into it, and then you can see how the logic is laid out. You'll see there's a start. It, it will show you what object is triggering this, this process, whether it's on created or on update. And then we have a condition, and then we have an action on the right-hand side and potentially a scheduled action as well. You'll notice at the top of my screen, there's a little alert here from Salesforce that is trying to get you to migrate from Process Builder into Flow. I'm gonna back out of that screen and now let's take a look at workflow rules. Workflow rules really have two components. They have the rule themselves, which is like the trigger and the logic for that rule. And then there's workflow actions right above it. And that's whatever action that rule triggers. You can see if you go to create a new workflow rule within Salesforce, it's gonna ask you to build it in Flow instead you can bypass that for now, but not sure how long that option will be available. And then right above workflow rules, we've got workflow actions. These workflow actions are still useful, even though rules aren't. And Flow can take advantage of some of these workflow actions. Email alerts, outbound messages, as an example, can be triggered by Flow. And some of these other actions here could be useful if you're still creating approval processes within Salesforce. Approval processes aren't a general purpose automation tool, they have a specific use case. The interface is, is a little bit old and it does take advantage of these workflow actions as well. And now let's take a quick look at flows. So just like with Process Builder, we can see that we've got a column here for whether or not this flow is active or inactive. And we also have a column that can be added to your layout for the triggering object. If it's a record, record triggered flow, you can see what object is triggering that flow. That's just scratching the surface though, because Flow has replaced Process Builder and Workflow Rules. It can do what those tools did, plus a lot more. We can create scheduled flows, we can create screen flows, et cetera. We've got a lot of videos on that. So the main takeaway today is, if you've got some automation that's happening in Salesforce and you're not sure where it's coming from, take a look at Workflow Rules, take a look at Process Builder. Maybe there's an automation in there that you missed. But moving forward, don't build anything new within those old tools. Instead, use Flow and spend your time learning Flow because that's gonna be the most useful thing moving forward. That's where you're gonna get the most value. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit like and click subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.